Your boy got his hot choco because it's Tearless Tuesday. What's going on with your big dog? And it is Tearless Tuesday. I hope that your day, phenomenal. But if it isn't, don't let what happened at the beginning of your day ruin the rest of your day. Today for Tier List Tuesday, I am going to be ranking the best Yu-Gi-Oh decks this format for December 2022. This is going to be the very last ranking of the best decks for the 2022 year. I'm especially thankful that every single one of you guys, regardless of how you feel about my takes, have sat down and watched one of my videos. Thank you so much. There are actually some really crazy decks that have topped over the last two weeks, and today I'm gonna to be giving you my opinion on them and how powerful that they can actually be going forward. Let's go ahead and address the elephant in the room. I think that tier limits is still your best bet to be able to win games in December of 2022. The deck was always good, but what really put the deck over the top were the Ashizu cards. If you're not in the tier limit mirror match, you can send 18 cards from your deck to the graveyard. And the fact that this deck is built off of being able to fusion summon in the graveyard is just free resources. At its core, tier limit is a busted Yu-Gi-Oh deck. And a lot of these strategies are going to be built off of, can they counter this deck consistently or not? Now, with that being said, I think that Despia actually has a really great option against Tier Limit. Darkwing Blast support was fairly subtle, but the Bestial monsters actually do the branded Despia strategy a great service. Not only do the Bestial monsters provide an excellent counter for Tier Limits, they actually open up some new combos for the Despia strategy to make it pretty incredible. In the TCG, Despia is more than just summon Mirror Jade to the side of the field, and I think that that's a really good change of pace for the deck. Now, Draco Slayer is a strategy that got some heavy support from Darkwing Blast. I'm gonna go ahead and put it into fair. Now, there is a couple of reasons why I'm gonna put it in fair. The good thing about Draco Slayer is that it can search cards like Necrovelli and Zombie World, which is amazing against the top decks in Yu-Gi-Oh. The bad thing is that it is a pendulum deck, meaning that a lot of back row removal that players have been using is going to hate, hurt Draco Slayers. What's been really cool about Draco Slayer is that it has been a topping Yu-Gi-Oh strategy over the last two weeks. I hope that continues so we can put it in a great option and it overcomes those obstacles. Dragon Maids may have seemed like a strange deck to have topped as a recent, but it actually makes a lot of sense. Heretic Seal of Heavenly Spheres and Dragon Mate Tiding both return cards to the hand. On top of that, a Heretic Seal being able to summon Fallen Albas for the deck is a few fusion summon, and the Bestial monsters work really well with the Dragon Mates, while also most of the Dragon Mates being non-light or dark, meaning that they dodge Bestial. I think that this deck is a pretty fair Yu-Gi-Oh deck. It's actually a nice change of pace for Dragon decks to be able to play a Dragon Mate strategy and have a good amount of success with it. Exo Sister is, oh man, I can't get right with this deck. I rate it high, it doesn't do anything. I rate it low, it tops. I, where am I gonna put it? One thing that has been consistent in my opinion with Exo Stepsisters is that if Tier Limit is a dominant force in the meta, this will be always a fair option and that's exactly where I'm gonna put it this time. If we're talking about decks that can use Zombie World and Necrovelli, I think it's one of the worst because decks like Draco Slayer and even Despia can search their field spells. But if we're just talking about overall a solid, easy to learn Yu-Gi-Oh deck that's pretty good inside of Yu-Gi-Oh right now, it's going to be Exo Stepsisters and the dryer that comes with them. Blue Under Reese has proven itself to be a best bet Yu-Gi-Oh deck. That barrier statue is something fierce, guys, and it's one of the only decks that can keep reusing Dimension Shifter, which is really good against Graveyard Reliant decks. Nothing has really changed from Blue Under Reese since its inception, but what has changed a lot has been Dark World. Dark World getting a whole new structure deck and some amazing support. I still think it's an uphill battle. And the reason why I would say uphill battle is because of the bestial monsters. Being able to banish Grapha when you're trying to fusion summon is huge, but also on top of that, I still think that the danger engine is not necessarily good because while the danger engine does bring you a lot of power, it brings you a ton of inconsistency. And if you're going at an event that requires multiple rounds, you're gonna need more consistency. The crazy thing about this is that this reminds me when Dark Worlds first came out way back. It was crazily inconsistent but powerful, and I wouldn't be surprised if a player did win a YCS with Dark World again. Cash Tira did not get the top set I would expect from it, but I still think it's a great option Yu-Gi-Oh deck. I think the biggest problem for Cash Tira is that a lot of players are waiting until full-ton Hypernova to actually explore this deck, but right now this deck is actually cracked. Unicorn being able to banish cards from your opponent's extra deck and Ogre being able to see the top five cards of your opponent's deck are really good. Those spells and trap cards are also insane, 
and the deck is splashable. Labyrinth has been doing all types of crazy numbers in the OCG, but if we were to come into the TCG, I think that Labyrinth is in an uphill battle spot. Now, I did a lot more testing after making that Twitch testing video. By the way, go ahead and check out that video as it's really, really fun. I realized that the biggest problem with Labyrinth is that a lot of your trap cards are good against certain decks like Tier Limit, but may struggle against Fluanda Reefs. Then there's the fact that your Labyrinth monsters are still dark monsters, and while your deck isn't graveyard reliant, losing your graveyard isn't the best thing to happen to you. I would say that the former is a way bigger problem than the latter, but the good thing is that we're gonna keep on getting more trap cards, which means Labyrinth is only gonna get stronger. But Dolce doesn't necessarily do anything bad here, but I do think it is an uphill battle of a Yu-Gi-Oh deck. Not only does Madolche still suffer from the same consistency issues that has plagued it for years, losing Herald of Orange Light does decrease the protections that the deck did have, and that's something that the deck sorely needed to be able to keep pacing with some of the other decks. Mouthback also feels like Madolche. This is not a bad Yu-Gi-Oh deck, I personally think that playing cards like maybe three Effect Veiler, three Infinite Impermanence, three DD Crow, three Skullmeister, maybe even three Ghost Bell, that will help greatly. The problem though is that that doesn't help you in every matchup. That's like Fluanda Reese and Cash Tira do not care about those hand traps I just said. And the Math Mech monsters are light, so they are prone to being banished by Bestials. Meg Knight was one of the surprising decks that topped the regional over the first weekend. I'm gonna say that this is Hopium. I was actually hoping that Dimensional Fissure would help Mech Knights the most because Mech Knights can gain benefits of having their monsters, their Psychic monsters being banished, and also have Dimensional Fissure serve as a column card to be able to gain more resources. But overall, unless your opponent is consistently summoning three cards in the same column, it's a it's, uh, very, very, very hard battle. Mutants have also gotten a top over the last format, and I gotta say, just like the Mathmic player, that is one godly player, man. That mutant player had to be good. Dog, I'm telling you, he must have been Donatello, Raphael, all of them, all of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and had Master Splinter training him, because this deck, it's just not good. I mean, it's not bad per se, but it, it's not good good we talked about it in yesterday's video Naturia is a great Yu-Gi-Oh option because this is the issues have been fixed by playing the runic engine to get you cards or you could just stick to the Ishizu engine to be able to disrupt your opponent as well as play bestials this has been one of the more pleasant surprises and the decks that have been topping fairly consistently over the past two weeks now what's going to be really weird here is that I don't think that Dragon Link is in Hopium but I'm not sure if it's better than Dragon Me, which is almost disrespectful. In theory, Dragon Link can make the exact same boards as Dragon Maids, but the only difference is that Dragon Link is a light and dark deck, so it's a little more pro. If you guys don't want any friends, then Runic is a great option, guys. I still love how this deck plays Messenger of Peace, but after you activate that card, it's almost bound to be violence. But whoever's playing this deck is definitely living Yu-Gi-Oh! in 2040. We're not even playing Yu-Gi-Oh! and summoning monsters. We're just decking the opponent out. Scarecrow is actually a pretty fair option in Yu-Gi-Oh! right now. I think that this would actually be be higher if the Ashizu cards wouldn't exist, but let's be real, I think that a lot of things would be different if the Ashizu cards didn't exist. While Scareclaw doesn't have any natural counters to Ashizu other than just OTKing the living daylights out of him, what Scareclaw does have is some natural counters to some of the other decks, which I think is pretty good. Sprite is still hanging on into that best bet category, and what I like about these three decks is that tier limits need the graveyard, Fluendaries don't need the graveyard, and then this deck, it can use the graveyard. So I think that that's kind of cool that all three decks have a different aspect of using the graveyard, and all three are powerful in their own right. Soul has a few tops under its belt, and I would say that it's a fair Yu-Gi-Oh deck. My problem with Sword Soul personally is that it is complete dog water when going first, but going second with some bestials? Yeah, you could probably OTK them. I mean, seriously, it is a great going second, just OTK deck. It's it's really good at that point. Boxia is one of the best synchro monsters to ever exist. And lastly, Virtual World did top over the last couple of weeks, but I'm gonna put it in Hopium. Virtual World players, if you saw that list, it was it was it was it was tier limit. The Virtual World cards aren't bad, but they were there to pretty much help facilitate a Beatrice. And that is all that I have for today's tier list. I want you to let me know what do you think about these particular spots, do you disagree with them, and also what are some strategies that I missed. Until then, you can check out these other amazing videos as I'll catch you on the next one.